New video this morning of a shooting involving Harbor Police. This happened on April 10th. Police say 29-year-old Eric Medina used a call box at the Harbor Police Station to ask for help, then walked back to his car. An officer went to check on him and saw Medina holding a gun. He told Medina to drop the gun and put his hands up. The officer says Medina pointed the gun at him, and that's when officers opened fire. Medina was hurt and is now in jail. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Netta Iramp. We're glad you're here with us. New this morning, Ukrainian refugees may soon stop entering the U.S. from Mexico. Instead, the White House trying to make it easier to come straight here into the U.S. from Europe directly. Under the new program, refugees who have a U.S. sponsor, such as family members here, can take advantage of a streamlined immigration process. This program is called Uniting for Ukraine, and it will launch on Monday. And now this morning, your taxpayer dollars back in the spotlight. Today, Sandag addressing nearly $2 million in toll booth revenue in the South Bay. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us now with a closer look at this here this morning. What's going on here, Chris? Yeah, good morning, guys. And really, in less than three hours, we're going to be getting hopefully some answers here from the Sandag Independent Auditor. They're going to present their findings on almost those $2 million in lost revenue to the board. Now, these tolls were meant to be collected on State Route 125. However, a tip to the agency's auditor revealed the toll sensors were actually disabled for about three months. Now, you may be asking, how could this happen? How could no one notice? Well, we may learn more answers to those questions later today. However, Sandag's chief economist told the audit committee that a contractor shut down the toll readers when borrowing parts to repair other malfunctioning toll readers. Sandag leaders are putting the blame squarely on the contractor. Here's that chief economist explaining the situation. The system there should have been replaced back in 2007. It's literally falling apart. And so what they're doing is cannibalizing certain pay points, taking parts and trying to get other ones working. And the toll booth technology is set to be replaced by the end of the month. So again, it remains to be seen exactly if this auditor in these findings later on today will put the blame on the contractor yeah. or maybe potentially management. And this as well. isn't the first time we've heard about controversy with Sandag here recently. We know that that auditor, that same one, recently put out this report about out of control spending. It involves Sandag credit mm -hmm. cards. Yeah, it was revealed last month that there were managers within Sandag that were apparently using, again, uh, credit cards, uh, not Co uh, not exactly in the right way, uh, spending at restaurants and, and not expensing them properly. So they said that they're going to be putting in new policies in order to try to correct this. Uh, but again, just another instance here of taxpayer dollars being brought up in this right. light. Right. They're being picked apart now yeah. and closer look at all of it. Chris Grove, thank yeah. you very thank much you for that. This morning, the fight over honors class is picking back up once again at San Diego's largest high school. And we're working for you to get answers here. Today, administrators are giving parents another chance to make their voices heard. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live in San Carlos now with what's expected, including uh, you have some reaction here today, Dana Marie. Yeah, that's exactly right, Eric. Good morning. Yesterday, parents had the first opportunity to hear from that principal and also speak their concerns in a Zoom call last night. We were there. We got reactions. So here's a couple of moments coming from both sides. I'd like to know in this phone call why Ms. Irwin is not speaking to the parents as I wanted to hear from her, not a backup of everybody defending her. I'd like to understand what pausing does for anyone, including the students. Other than the introduction, Principal Michelle Irwin made no remarks during the entire session last night. Many again wanted to hear from her. Now back in February, this is what Irwin emailed parents sharing why those AP honors courses would be cut. She said they were for equity reasons. She pointed to the racial disparity between honors and non honors courses, wanting to eliminate the stigma of students who were in non honors courses. However, parents are saying that cutting those classes are making it very challenging for kids trying to get into college. Cutting those courses again would cap their grade point average at uh, only 4.0. And parents say that's just not enough to be competitive with other schools in San Diego, showing kids with 4.3 GPAs, 4.5 GPAs, many trying to get into state and UC schools, which is extremely difficult. Now, there is another opportunity for parents to have a Zoom uh, call and voice their concerns today at 9 a.m. Principal Irwin will be again on Zoom. We have that link for you on cbsstate.com so use our website as a resource if you're a parent in this patrick henry community and really do want to get your voice heard i'm dana marie mcnichol coming to you live from san carlos eric
Henry, thank you. In just a few hours here, the San Diego Union High School District Board is set to meet over comments made by the superintendent. Dr. Cheryl James Ward is on administrative leave right now after making comments about Asian students' academic success. Families spoke out Wednesday night and demanded James Ward to resign or be fired. The board will meet today at 1 p.m. to discuss how to move forward. On this Earth Day, President Joe Biden will sign an executive order to tackle the climate crisis. That includes preserving some of the nation's oldest trees. Here at home, you are invited to an Earth Day celebration at the County Operations Center. This morning starts at 11 a.m. And then tomorrow, we invite you to come out to the Creek to Bay cleanup. Evan and I will be there emceeing at Gompers Park, Mission Bay. That's all part of I Love a Clean San Diego's big cleanup efforts. And on Sunday, you can attend Balboa Park's Earth Fair. That is free. You can find information on all of this and more weekend events at CBS8.com. And on this Earth Day, we are taking a closer look at the new food recycling law. This is something so many of you have asked us about. So we're dedicating an entire half hour to this. During this Earth 8 special today, we're going to explain what to put in the green bins and why they've been fairly slow to roll out in some parts of San Diego while others have already started. Watch this tonight at 6.30 p.m. right here on CBS 8. And coming up in a little bit in our newscast, I'm going to put you two to the test. See what to put oh. in the green bin. What do you know that goes in there? We'll find out. Oh, mm. We always like a little pop <laughs> quiz, don't we? Yes. Yeah, I never really do too well on them, but I'm still excited to, to find out. I feel like every time <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. know. What do I put <laughs> in this? It's definitely a learning experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it goes to show how confusing it is. That's right. right. That's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Play along with us. You can see just how smart your recycling knowledge is as well. It's 6.07 right now. Live look outside at Coronado shows. It is breezy. Number one, you see the palm trees blowing in the wind. Cloudy skies out there. A few raindrops still coming down. And that is really county wide with some spots picking up on heavier amounts of precipitation. No surprise. That's mainly taking place inland across your valleys and across your mountaintops. Here are updated rain totals just coming into our newsroom. We've got about a third of an inch in Alpine. La Mesa picked up on nearly a quarter of an inch so far in Fashion Valley 17 one hundredths, so nearly two tenths of an inch, one tenth in Kearney Mesa. And as we've talked about so far this morning, Oceanside, your coastline really picking up on the light accumulations less than a tenth of an inch overall. So again, these numbers are brand new and are likely to increase between now and about noon because those scattered showers are still continuing to pass through. The majority of them have subsided. You can see how dry it is along the coastline with the exception of the greater downtown San Diego area. Farther toward the South Bay, we're mainly dry as well. You've got this one cell right here, yellow and orange on the screen, indicating some moderate to heavy activity taking place. We're not ruling out the shot of a few embedded thunderstorms in this system. You can see how earlier this morning in Los Angeles passing through LA all the way through Orange County, we saw a pretty decent line of showers and thunderstorms pass through. But for us, we've been mainly seeing that residual activity all through the AM hours between now and about noon. We'll expect showers to persist by the PM hours afternoon time frame. We're going to start to see those clouds break apart and give us a little bit of sunshine. Temperatures are going to remain cool 63 this afternoon for your coast upper 50s inland. So it is going to be a chilly one out there. Bring the jacket with you because you're going to feel it in terms of those temperatures, in terms of the breeze out there, and then of course the showers that remain throughout the day. But a dry weekend is in store. This is leaving as quickly as it arrived, and that means that Saturday and Sunday we're on a gradual warming trend. It's going to be a beautiful weekend overall with a lot of sunshine and warming temperatures, especially through Sunday and Monday. Widespread 80s are in the forecast. Take a look at your drive times out there. 12 minute commute from Oceanside to Encinitas. 15 minute commute uh, on the 805 northbound from San Ysidro to the 94. A lot of green, which is a good thing to see here on a rainy morning. But again, take caution. There are some slick roads out there as you start off your Friday. Back to you.